Hello. Um, I was asked in some forums about how to make uh, certain logic mechanisms in Infinifactory, things like not, and, or, flip-flop, that sort of digital logic, because there's a lot of builds where that's actually useful. So, I decided to make this quick little video showing a couple of basic mechanisms without actually using them in any particular puzzle, so you don't get any hints to how to finish the puzzle with them, but just show you the base mechanisms. Um, I was going to just do this as animated GIFs, but the animated GIF feature in Infinifactory does not work in the experimental screen like this, so I had to do it as a YouTube video. Okay, first kind of gate I'm going to do is an OR gate, which everyone probably already knows, but just to complete the discussion I'll start with it. It's the simple one, if you join together conduit pipe from more than one switch, if either switch is on or both switches is on, the conduit pipe is on which of course is intuitively obvious. So here as these blocks come up... Whoops, hold on a second. I did this slightly wrong. Let's move this down a step. There, that's what I meant to do. So as either block hits, it's turned on. That's not really demonstrating it properly. Let's uh, demonstrate it this way. I will... have some conduit come out from that joined spot, and I will use it to make some kicker out pushers. If either switch is on, it pushes. So this is a very simple OR gate. If either switch is on, it pushes. But notice, it's either one. So when it's only one over here, and not the other one, it still pushes. Which is maybe not what you want. Let's say that what you actually wanted was one that only pushes when both are out. So we're going to turn this into an AND gate. We want to make it so these pushers only activate when both inputs are true. So the way to do this, or at least one way I've found to do it, it's probably more than one way, is to have one of the two switches activate a pusher whose content is a piece of piping. which will attach to the second switch. So basically, this first switch, if it's on, the piping pushes out to here and completes the circuit. If the second switch is on, it uses that circuit to do the push. If the second switch is on and the first one isn't, the pipe's not complete, so the second one can't work. So if you watch that and... whoops, <laughs> oops. Let's actually connect that. So if both are there, it pushes out. But when only one is there, it doesn't push yet. So the blue one's going faster than the white, the blue comes out, it's not good enough until the white shows up, and then it'll push. And that's true if I reversed these and made the white one come out faster than the blue one. You'll see that it's working in both directions. If they're both there, it pushes. If just one is, it's not enough until the other one arrives. So that is your basic AND gate. Now, let's do a NOT mechanism. For this, we'll only need one of these two. We'll ignore, we'll ignore the blue one over there. So, in fact, actually, I think we can ignore the blue one for the rest of my examples. Let's just get rid of it entirely. So, if we want a NOT mechanism, what I'm going to do to show this is I'm just going to extend this out for quite a long distance. Let, uh, let these blocks just fall off into nothing. I want to make this so that when a block passes a certain point and activa activates this switch, it causes a light to turn off, which would normally have been on. Thus, it's a NOT mechanism. So the way I'm going to do that is, let's see, you put a blocker activated by that switch, and in that blocker you put, obviously, a block. So when you start off, the block is going to be here, and it's going to retract whenever, a sw whenever the switch comes by. Well, why does that matter? Well, because what I'm going to put on that block is I'm going to put it 
up against its own switch. So I'll put a switch here that aims at that block. Now watch the pipe in the sky. The pipe is on until a block is here, and then the pipe is off, and then it's on again. So when this switch activates, it temporarily turns the pipe off. So this is basically a knot mechanism. Now you'll notice that because it has to move parts, there is a slight delay to the mechanism. It doesn't really turn this off until the block gets to the next spot because it takes time to retract this block. So in effect, not only is it a knot, but it's also a delayer mechanism if you need that. Unfortunately, it's a delayer mechanism even if you don't need it, which means it sometimes can be a bit fiddly to use in your designs. But there you go, that's a knot gate. So I've done and, I've done or, I've done not. Now for the complicated one, which is the flip-flop. A flip-flop is, uh, if you don't know what that term means, it's from digital electronics, and it basically is just a single bit. A bit you can turn on, and then another way you can turn it off, and then another way you can turn it back on, and it keeps its state. If you turn it on, it stays on until you explicitly turn it off. So here is how I can do that. If you do something very similar to what I just had a moment ago, and you have one of these blocks that is always out by default. Let's change it, actually, into a regular plunger so it only comes out when it gets a, a signal, okay? And, very similar to before, when it comes out, it turns on a switch. But what does that switch actually do that it turns on? Let's make it keep the block extended. So when the switch turns on, it forces the block to stay on and keeps the switch on. So as you watch, we turn the switch on, and it forces the plunger to stay on, so that once it's turned on, it's on for good. So this is called the set line of your flip-flop. But for a flip-flop to be really useful, you have to also be able to reset it, which means turn it back off again. So how could you reset this? Well, you kind of combine together the principles we already had. If you could imagine what it would be like if this piece of the pipe... Actually, hold on a sec. Let me go back a step. There, do it from here. If this piece of the pipe... is only present because a blocker has put it there. Then you get the behavior of your set flip-flop all the time. But it gives you the ability to break it by having this get activated somewhere else. So what I am going to do is put a sensor over here. Now, I'm using up a lot of real estate here that you probably wouldn't want to in the real game. You'd want a, a lower block score, but I want it to be easily visible. So what this should do is as a block passes the switch, it will turn... Let me make this go up into the sky. Whee. Okay. As the block passes this point, it will make that pipe up in the sky turn on. And when a block passes this point, it will make the pipe up in the sky turn off. Now let me turn the input weight rate way down so you can watch this happening. Block comes out, turns it on, leaves it on until it hits here, and turns it off. Let me slow down the rate a bit more, even. So, block turns pipe on, pipe stays on, block turns pipe off. So as you watch them go by the set and the reset switch, you can see that it stays on as long as we want it to be on, and then finally turns off when it hits the other switch. So that's a basic set-reset flip-flop mechanism. So with these uh, four mechanisms, not, or, and, and flip-flop, it allows you to do a lot more complicated designs with your machinery. You can turn a thing on and leave it on until you feel like turning it back off again. I think that's quite useful. I've used it in a couple of my machines so far. But anyway, people wanted to know these basic mechanisms. I tried explaining them in words, and it really needs the picture to make it clear, so I went and made this short video.